welcome today we will continue with our discussion on organizational structure and design in the last class we have discussed about what is structure and like structure is the anatomy of the organization we have also discussed what are the different types of um, structures possible and we have also discussed about the key elements in structure along with like what are the variables affecting structure like technology like environment like the strategy of the organization so on and so forth today we are going to continue with the structure effectiveness relationship and uh, we some researches on uh, previous researches on organizational structure and also we will try to see like what are the major challenges of organizational design in this lecture in the next lecture we are trying to see some of the design options along with like indian organizations and how they are function and empowerment in, in organizations and the cultural effects in the indian organizations like when we are talking of effectiveness of um, structure structure and its relationship to effectiveness we have to understand like structures like or similar to that of organizations are also goal oriented and they are purposive in nature so structure should be focused um, towards the um, organizational effectiveness so sometimes what happens people do not understand the structure in a scientific way they try to interpret structure based on their own understandings and taking cues from the things present around them and they they form their own perception about the structure these are called implicit models of structure based on one's own understanding about what a structure is and putting own judgments into it and not following like what exactly the process of structure should be based on scientific feedback that is called implicit model of structure we visiting some of the earlier of research findings uh, on structure um, relationship with um, effectiveness and um, how trying to see how it, it affects the structure affects the behavior of the structure or the design affects the behavior of the employees in the organization we get to see two very important studies which are called Lorentz and Lorentz studies and Burn and Stoker study on on enva issues of like organization designing so here we'll try to visit those two studies first along with the other research findings that are obtained when we are talking of organizational design and its effect on employee behavior what we get to see over here is like the research findings is work specialization contributes to higher employee productivity but it reduces job satisfaction the benefits of specialization have decreased rapidly as employees seek more intrinsically rewarding jobs the effect of span of control on employee performance is contingent upon individual differences and in abilities task structure and other organizational factors participative decision making in decentralized organizations is positively related to job satisfaction so this benefits of specialization decreasing rapidly as employees are seeking more intrinsically rewarding jobs 
this we have discussed earlier in the earlier class as we find like if the jobs are too much specialized in nature then employee do not get a holistic idea of uh, how to do the job or what is the meaningfulness of this job, how it is contributing towards the total organizational functioning as a result it may lead to stress and boredom and loss of connectivity with the main purpose of the organization. So, these can be less rewarding and lead to less productivity as sometimes employees seek jobs which are intrinsically more rewarding, more challenging in nature from which they are able to learn something new. The effect of span of employee behavior as you have seen is also dependent on like the um, thing like when it, it is dependent on the ability of the um, employee and the competence of the employee. If the employee is able enough, is competent enough to take decisions, to decide about things, to do, to know how to do things differently, then the span of control could be large because one to one supervision, one to one guidance is maybe not required because employees are matured enough to think in their own way. But when that is not the situation or the task structure is um, too much complex which requires one to one guidance, maybe then the span of control is less as compared to when the task structure is simple or uh, routine in nature. When organizational decision making is decentralized, then participative management by employees participating in the decision making process leads to better job satisfaction. So, these are some of the research findings as far as organizational design and employee behavior is concerned. Next, we will move to the Lawrence and Lodge studies which talked about differentiation and integration and its effect on and um, environment and how these factors affect the design process of the organization. Here we try to see Lawrence and Losh, they investigated how companies in different industries differentiate and integrate their structures to fit the environment. So, when you are talking of differentiation and integration, then it may appear to be like to oppositely acting thing once we are trying to differentiate into small small jobs and then we are again trying to integrate it together. So, how to balance it based on and the what is the nature of the environment. So, what we found is that when environment is perceived as more unstable and uncertain. So, what happens uh, to deal with that effective organizations are less formalized, more decentralized and rely on mutual adjustment because when the environment is unstable, uncertain, then we do not have a set procedure of understanding how to react to this uncertainty. There is no set formula for it. As a result, when there is no set formula and rules for deciding like that, like how to act in certain ways in conditions of environment which is like maybe known to us. So, what happens in this condition of uncertainty and unstable environment, the effective organizations tend to be less formalized, more decentralized and rely more on mutual adjustment. When environment is perceived to be like stable and certain, so what what are the challenges and how it what would be the outcome and how it is to be made when all these things are known, 
then effective organizations are more centralized centrally defined rules and procedures which is applicable throughout the organization decision making is centralized in nature because we don't get any uncertainty from special pockets of the environment in throughout which the maybe throughout geography which our organization is spread and formalized structure so this was Lawrence and Lorsch's finding about the relationship of differentiation, integration and environment and how it affects the design of the organization. Next we move on to a study by Barnes and Stoker which talks of the relationship of uncertainty, differentiation and integration. So. Mm, Mm -hmm. Accordingly, like it tells, like when degree of uncertainty in terms of complexity of the environment, the dynamism in the environment and the richness of the environment is high, in, it is need to high degree of departmental differentiation and cross functional integration. So, Environmental uncertainty and structure. Organizations need different kinds of structure to control their activities based on the environment. Unstable and changing environment. In unstable and changing environment, organizational structures are more organic in nature. So, organic structure is a complex structure with high differentiation high integration, decentralized decision making and mutual adjustment. When it is a stable environment, centralized, formalized and standardized mechanistic structures are more effective. Mechanistic structures are simple structures with low differentiation, low integration, centralized decision making and standardization. So, what we find over here is like the degrees of uncertainty in terms of the like when you are talking of capacity, volatility or complexity of the environment, capacity in the terms of whether the resource is scarce or abundant in nature in the degrees of volatility in the terms of whether it is or environment is stable or dynamic in nature and complexity in terms of whether it is simple and complex in nature all these will define whether the degrees of department differentiation and cross functional integration and we find like in a more dynamic, complex and scarce environment. Okay. Mm, organic structure is the answer and in more simple than stable and abundant environment mechanistic structure is the answer to it. The decisions to be made while designing an organization are like how to uh, divide the task into successively smaller jobs. So, what we can do is we can divide it into smaller sets of uh, similar jobs and also into specialized activities and responsibilities. So, that is how we define the first is how to define divide a job into uh, smaller units. So, either you take as units like smaller sets of related activities or we take at specialized activities and responsibilities. How to like when you are talking of how to distribute authority, it is like what is authority is the right to make a decision without higher um, approval. Um, like we do not have to take the higher authorities approval of for making certain decisions. So, that is authority. Authority is also defined by the ability to 
control the behavior of others and right to extract obedience from others. And when we are talking of um, like we jobs to be grouped together and what is the appropriate size of the group like what will be the span of control what what will be the number of people who will be working together as peers which types of jobs will be grouped together these are some of the questions which are relevant for while we are talking of designing an organization when we are talking of or thinking of organizational design it is faced by certain challenges which are called design challenges <clears throat> now we'll try to find out some of these design challenges and how to deal with those challenges one of the design challenges the first of the design challenges is differentiation so we will try to see first what is differentiation and when you are talking of differentiation what do we mean by division of labor, How? In, what is meant by vertical differentiation, horizontal differentiation and we will try to find out issues regarding it. So first design challenge is of course differentiation. So differentiation is the process by which an organization allocates people and resources to organizational tasks it establishes the task and authority relationship that allow the organization to achieve its goal so what we do is we divide the task into you know, like you know, organization there, there are certain tasks and what we do is allocate people and resources to that task and so what it establishes like the authority relationship, task relationship that which allows the organization to achieve its goal. Division of labor is the process of establishing and controlling the degree of specialization in the organization. Mm, so, what happens in a, mm, a simple organization, the differentiation is low because the division of labor is low. So, what happens here, individuals typically perform all organizational tasks because there we can understand. So, mm, because there are less number of employees. Uh, it's small organization there are less number of employees so one employee there is have to perform uh, different tasks and and the, the, there is less of like or specialization in it so when the organization becomes complex in nature uh, there are more employees added to it, the task also gets complex in nature. As a result, what happens like the, the division of labor takes place as the differentiation is high because of the division of labor is high, division of labor takes place and they are, um, they are taken in for doing specialized um, separate tasks with Mm, like specialized type of task because of this complexity of the job situation in the organization. So, mm, the advantages of this is like mass production relies on specialized labor. So, if we are doing some repetitive task and with less of variations in it, so what happens if it is a uh, specialized labor like focusing on each portions of the thing then it, it helps in mass production and specialized labor is often through organizations what are the different building blocks of um, differentiation if you want to see the four building blocks of differentiation our organization, division, uh, function and role. 
So when we are talking of organizational level, there are two types of differentiation, vertical differentiation and horizontal differentiation. Mm. Vertical mm, differentiation is the way an organization designs its hierarchy of mm, authority and creates reporting relationships to link organizational roles and subunits. So, oh, how employees are placed in the hierarchy, who reports to whom, all this like when what is the um, then authority, how it is designed at each level of the organization, these are parts of vertical differentiation. When we are talking of horizontal differentiation, it is the way in which organization groups tasks into roles and roles into subunits. So, um, like what are the things which are there at the similar level in the organization. Organizational roles are a set of task related behaviors required of a person by his or her position in an organization. As the division of labor increases, managers specialize in some roles um, and hire people to specialize in others. Specialization allows people to develop their individual abilities and knowledge within their specific role. The identification of role leads to authority and control issues. So, what we do over here, we divide it is a set of rules that we task related activities that are created like these required of a person in his position and these are first defined properly task related behaviors. Then as the division of labor increases more and more people join you have more number of manpower. Managers specialize in some roles and hire um, people to specialize in others. So, specialization allows one employee to become expert in that particular um, domain. Um, the identification of roles with the roles becomes a center for authority and control issues. Authority is the power to hold people accountable for their actions and to make decisions concerning the use of organizational resources. So, the power, it is a legitimate power given by the organization to hold people responsible for their actions and to make decisions concerning like how to use organizational resources. Control is the ability of the um, organization to coordinate and motivate people to work in the organization's interest. Mm. So, these are four major blocks, building blocks of right, differentiation. How differentiation is done, how the different units are formed are like it is called based on like functions and divisions. Mm. Function is a subunit composed of a group of people working together who pros, mm, possess similar skills and or use the same kind of knowledge, tools or techniques to perform their mm, jobs. So, function you, t you can think of there are similar type of people who have similar set of skills, use the same kind of knowledge, tools and techniques to perform their jobs. Mm. And division is a subunit that consists of um, division is a subunit that consists of 
collection of functions or departments that share responsibility for producing a particular good or service. So, um, here what happens? So, um, in, in division, under a certain division, there are n number of uh, functions which are grouped together so that um, a particular um, good or services if it is developed properly. So, what happens when you are putting all the functions under one department, there is good communication collaboration between these functional areas and holistically they contribute towards the development of the um, uh, product and for the organization. Five function types are um, like um, support functions which facilitate an organization's control of its relations with um, environment and stakeholders. Example like purchasing sales and marketing, public relations and legal affairs. Product functions is the manage and improve the efficiency of an organization's conversion process so that more value is created. Example production um, operations, production control and quality control. Third function is that of maintenance function is where an um, um, enable an organization to keep its departments in operation like personal engineering and janitorial services. Adaptive functions is follow an organization to um, sorry allow an organization to adjust to changes in the environment example research and development market research and long range planning. Managerial function is to facilitate the control and coordination of activities within and among departments, top management, middle management and lower management. These are the five function types when you are talking of like differentiation. So, departmental basis are the reasons for grouping certain tasks, it refers to grouping tasks and it is necessary for coordination. So, function and departmentation are divisions based on functions. The advantage is that of um, efficiency, disadvantage is organizational goals may be sacrificed in favor of departmental goals and territorial departmentalization like um, division is based on geographical area helpful um, helpful in large organizations where centralization is difficult. So, um, first of this departmentalization technique is functional departmentalization. Next is like when you are talking of product departmentalization. In product departmentalization, the division is based on product line. It is helpful in um, like um, large uh, diversified companies. <coughs> what happens over here is the manager is um, developed in, is developing experience in or expertise in many areas. The disadvantage is um, there could be some redundancy because each product line has its own research and engineering and marketing. Um, customer departmentalization in this um, departmentalization there is division based on customer groups or clients and better able to satisfy customer needs and um, we have 
mixed and changing departmentalization where organizations use a mix of biases mm, where organizations use a mix of mm, bases at different levels organizations will change department bases over time as conditions change these are mixed and changing departmentalization next we move on to the design challenge 2 which is the again a balance that we have to do um, between our differentiation and integration because as we told earlier differentiation and integration are sometimes understood as two oppositely acting forces and terms so design challenge 2 is balancing differentiation and integration horizontal differentiation is supposed to enable people to specialize and become more productive however the specialization um, may limit the communication between sub units as the people develop sub unit orientation sub unit orientation is a tendency to view one's role in a time frame um, goal and interpersonal orientation of um, one sub unit integration is the process of coordinating various task functions and divisions Um, is the process of coordinating various task functions and divisions so they work together and are not at cross purposes so um, like how we do it you know on one side um, there is differentiation which may develop in people some reservations to share some more orientation towards their own group and on the other side we are also talking of integration which means mm, like finding something common and co- people coordinate between the task and so they get to work together and are not cross purposes now challenge is to blend these concepts together seven types of integrating mechanisms are like hierarchy of um, authorities in the sense who reports to whom and next is like direct contact in the sense managers meet face to face to coordinate activities liaison roles is a specific manager is given responsibility for coordinating with managers um, from other sub sub units on behavior um, on behalf of their own sub units um, the task force is where managers meet in temporary committees to coordinate cross functional activities teams where managers um, meet regularly in permanent com- committees to coordinate activities integrating role is a new role in established to coordinate um, activities of two or more functions or departments so um, integrating department is a new department that is created to coordinate the activities of uh, the functions or divisions so these are seven types of integrity mm, integration uh, seven types of okay, integration mechanism challenges how to balance the differentiation and integration mm. the what can be done over here is a challenge is how to mm, 
face make managers face the challenge of balancing these two things together so first is the differentiation should be done very properly minutely carefully in the sense to find out what are the competencies in which the people differ and make them into two um, separate headings um, and the two things that are to be done are in differentiation carefully guide the processes of differentiation so that it develops core competencies and that gives the organization a competitive advantage and like carefully integrating the organizations by choosing the mechanisms by choosing appropriate integration mechanisms that allows subordinates to cooperate and then bind them together and which builds up the core competency of the organization when we are talking of when when we are talking of the when we are talking of design challenge 3 then we are trying to balance centralization and decentralization what is done in centralization versus decentralization of the authority in centralized organizations set up whereby the authority to make important decisions is retained by the top level managers people in this response organization do not take responsibility or risks they are always looking to the boss for directions and supervision as a result decision making is low and decision making is low and cumbersome and it's like and it misses out on a lot of opportunities to create values because everything is decided at the top level employees do not get a chance to contribute to tell their own ideas to this problem at hand decentralized is an organizations uh, set up whereby the um, authority to make important decisions um, is delegated to managers at all levels in the organization um, decisions about how to distribute decision making authority in um, in an organization changes as organization grows and differentiates so how to balance authority is an ongoing mineral is ongoing managerial task so whether to go for all centralized structure or whether there is a mix of centralized and decentralized structure these things have to be decided as a part of the designing activity and then what is the related part of discussion for it is the delegation of authority when we are talking of delegation of authority every job has a range of alternative configurations of authority hmm. and each has its gains and losses 
advantages of high delegation of authority are develop professional managers leads to a more competitive um, climate managers expressive uh, it it leads to a competitive climate managers exercise more authority satisfying their problem solving desires but there are certain um, there are certain costs of um, high delegation of authority like costly training in um, decision making may be necessary managers do not delegate to subordinates or for fear of losing control um, monitoring systems to evaluate decision making are expensive to develop and use so these are certain things um, which affects the delegation of authority when we are talking of the design challenge for it is about balancing standardization and mutual adjustment then standardization is the um, standardization is the conformity to specific models for example that are considered to be given proper in a particular situation mutual adjustment is like the compromise that emerges when decision making and coordination are evolutionary in process and people use their judgment um, rather than standardized rules and procedures to address a particular problem formalization is the use of written rules and procedures to standardize operations people in these organizations pay um, much attention to the rules so what happens over here is um, the drawback over here is um, the because people pay too much of attention to rules and procedures i do not get a service whenever i require it um, whenever i need somebody to satisfy an unusual customer request or need like real quick solutions to problems then then maybe mm, no we do not get this because no one is willing to bend or break the rules so what is the major part of this standardization is the rules and mm, processes the norms and um socialization what we find over here is rules are formal written statements that specify the appropriate means for reaching desired goals norms are standards or styles of behavior that are considered to be acceptable for a group of people and socialization is the process by which organizational members learn the norms of an organization and internalize this unwritten rules of conduct so the um, challenges faced by managers is to find a way in find a way of using the rules and norms to standardize the behavior so at the same time managers need to allow for mutual adjustment to find out discover uh, 
new and better ways for um, achieving the goals. So, what we can uh, understand from this situation is that there are various design challenges as we have seen like design challenge of uh, differentiation where the main question is again of how to differentiate into like whether the organization should be more of vertical in nature or horizontal in nature. Again question of if it is horizontal in nature what should be the maximum like spread of the organization. If it is vertical in nature then what is the structure of the organization in the vertical like hierarchy like like how, how much tall should be the organization or how much flat the organization should be. When we are talking of uh, differentiation uh, according like we know like there are five functions of the organization like supportive functions then we have like um, main functions of the organizations maintenance functions etc. So, or if you are talking of uh, in the sense um, departmentations which should we go for departmentation by functions, should we go by departmentations for by products or for customers or we go for a territorial departmentation or we go for um, according to the mixed departmentation. Again there, there are these are challenges because it, it is widely influenced by the environment in which we are functioning, the nature of the task, the challenges found um, outside the um, organization and how it affects the business and which is the best answer. So, should we stick to one type of dep departmentation or we have to um, change based on the changing conditions? These are again um, challenging questions of uh, designs like uh, should we stick to one thing for throughout the again throughout the organization or if you are different uh, like or it should be different according to the different types of business we are doing or uh, different product lines so, so or should it be similar throughout the time frame or we need to change that is one question. Third important um, part is like when we are talking of um, differentiating and integrating um, the, these two terms then how to keep a balance between differentiating and integrating if, if the organization is too much of like um, differentiated and then how, how do we um, integrate and do we redefine managerial roles in terms of including functions like liaison roles to be played to like to um, assimilate in terms of task forces to know what um, other um, other teams are doing or to or communicate with each other so that um, they get to know like what um, what, what are the different groups doing. So, what we have to think of is first differentiate based on the core competencies that are specifically required for a particular type of job and then try to again establish certain functions roles which will act as linking pins between these two different factors so that each gets, know, uh, gets to know how the other group is um, function. So, that is again the integrating role and managers now may be um, having more the role of um, integrating. So, should it be defined um, clearly in the managerial role what training people get for like um, this um, integrating roles. Next is the another concern for the organization is how to take a balance between centralization and uh, decentralization in the sense like um, what decisions should be centralized, what decisions should be decentralized so, um, and if it is decentralized to what extent is the 
authority given for making independent decisions without getting it informed to the um, central part of the organization to what level this authority should be given. Now, when we are talking of delegation of authority, like do we, one of the question is like, who are the types of managers who would love to delegate authority and if that, the, and should I delegate the authority and free myself of all responsibility or delegation of the authority means like I have to uh, train that person to whom the authority is delegated so that um, that person functions properly and doesn't misutilize the power or doesn't feel threatened when the authority is delegated to that person. These are questions to be answered before we talk of design. Then when you're talking of standardization and um, rules, formalization, uh, socialization processes in the organization, norms, etc. So, well, what is the degree of it that should be there in the um, organization? So, so, what what would be the defined rules and what are the defined norms in the organizations or standards of behavior that are strictly followed and what, what is done is um, what should be told to the employees as a part of the orientation and socialization so that they get to know the views of the organization. Uh, these are um, certain ways of uh, certain important like challenges like do we want all people to behave in similar way um, or we want to them to maintain their individuality so that some diversity is maintained and the creativity is there in the organization and people like it, it's just not like they are uh, functioning as um, pure templates of the organization but their individuality is there as which creates a heterogeneous group and they can utilize that diversity for um, creativity purposes. So, uh, these things we have to differ. What we may say from here that um, uh, it, it really depends on the situation and it depends on the um, vision that the main organization has, the philosophy it nurtures um, and the pressures from the environment, the type of people that they have from within and the type of work that they are doing that will define their um, design options and the uh, structure that the organization is following like um, we cannot um, generalize in some cases for like what will be the structure and what type of um, structure or design is um, going to make people happy and uh, more functioning in the organization because people <coughs> because people vary in their individual differences their perceptions their attitudes their values and some people love uh, or is more comfortable with more specialized works some people while others are get bored out of it some people love autonomy while others see autonomy as a threat. Mm, then some people are mm, likes to uh, be decide, uh, have that power of decision making, loves empowerment. But some people wants to be guided. So, you know, and that will affect their. Uh, performance. So, it's not like that all people will be um, comfortable in working with all types of um, organizations or all, or all types of organizations will take in any type of person and try to fit in them into the uh, relevant structure or design which is there. So, uh, so because this is uh, like mutual adjustment of the organizational setup with the person's personal setup 
in terms of the his preferences, likes and dislikes, attitudes, personality pattern, etc. So, while selection process, going for selecting employees, these things, these individual differences should be more specifically checked to know like whether this employee will fit into the particular work environment that is there, the nature of the work that is there and the design of the organization that we are working with based on the uh, like working within the sense like based on the environmental demands and the nature of tasks that we are doing and how that is the culture that that is the culture which our organization has developed now if the design is done and the structure is established and we were to take employees into it we have to check while um, taking in employees are will they be happy working in this um, setup or uh, will they gel with their setup or not otherwise the performance may be affected thank you